Welcome to Range Time. I'm your host, Ghost, and today we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks to check and see if Ace is online or offline. We're going to offer some advice to people who have their boundary constantly appearing all of a sudden. We're also going to take a look at how the ballistics in Ace behave at the zeroing range. And lastly, we're going to cover some of the changes that occurred with Season 3, including how do we get ranked, how that's calculated, and what the old ranked leaderboards are used for moving forward. So with that, let's get started. To start off, if Ace is giving issues where you can't log in or you think it may be down, there's a mobile app available on the iOS and Android store. If you go into that app and you can't refresh any of the pages there, none of your information works, chances are Ace is down. If not, it may be something on your end, such as an internet issue or maybe something having to do with just a connection between you and their servers. When that happens, I recommend going into offline mode. When you come back online, your scores will sync back up as soon as it connects back to the server. So just a quick little tip available for Additionally, a recent update with the MetaQuest hands headset requires the handsets to sync constantly. So if you have the left controller sitting nearby, the headset will actually call out to it and say, hey, I need you to be online. That causes this issue. Yeah, our boundary will appear forever because the left handset is outside of the boundary. There's two ways to go around this. Um, I prefer just taking the controller and taking the battery out of it. The other way is to keep the controller on you at all times. I don't really recommend that though for a lot of reasons. So bottom line, that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to say, hey, there's a handset outside your boundary. Uh, you need to fix that. Um, my recommendation, just go ahead and take the battery out of it. You should be good to go. If not, go into the quest settings clear your boundary cache and redraw your room scale boundary. That should reset any issues you're having with the boundary popping up. And a lot of people have been wondering, why is my bullet impacting low? Or why is it impacting where it is in relation to the target? What we're gonna do is do a check here in thrills on the zeroing range and demonstrate the holdover within ACE and how it applies to different ranges. Um, just in case you aren't used to shooting an optic, this might enlighten uh, some of you on that and how that behaves. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll go to thrills. We'll go ahead and go to the zeroing range here. And we can see here to our right, we've got our target that dictates where we uh, last shot. So the closest target, we can go ahead and just take a shot at it. It's right at five yards. Uh, so yeah, when I was aiming at the pacer there, a little above it, it drops right into it because in ACE, it's a 15 yard zero. So I've got the chevron here. The tip of the chevron is actually where this optic zero. So you should be able to see this through my eye. And in looking at the head box, if I go ahead and place the top of the chevron at the top of the paster and do my work, it should drop it right into the center. Now, if I use the top of the chevron and put that in the middle of the paster, we're gonna impact a little low. Um, it's only the height over bore, so the height from the optic to the barrel, maybe an inch, inch and a half. But when you go right up to the target, you can see, you know, that's about how much different that is, right? So if I'm aiming right here, my optic is there, and my barrel's impacting there. So that, that shows us that height over bore offset, right? Um, so we'll go ahead and head back to our starting position. Teleport there, turn back around. So that target was at five yards. Now let's do that at 10 yards in the center zone. We'll go ahead and again do our best to get the tip of the chevron into the paster. Nice and easy. And we can look here to our side, showing the hit. We'll go up to it. Tip of the chevron on that one was just outside the paster on top. Drops it a little bit, so we're getting really close to that zero holdover range, which should be our next target at 15 yards. We'll go ahead and head back. see if I can hit it in the middle there. So tip of the chevron is going to be touching the white as best I can. Of course, it's hard to shoot the one inch group at 15 yards, but we'll see. A little high. Let's do that one more time. Okay, a little better there. So you can see if I could shoot better, uh, that's pretty much where I was aiming. So when I let that shot go, that was where it was going to impact. As we go back further, we're going to notice a little bit of offset as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take five controlled shots 
at these last three targets and analyze those and see where we're at with the grouping. The next target I believe is at 20 yards, so we'll go ahead and take five controlled shots. Okay, tip of the chevron on the target that we're aiming at in this case. Okay, we can see our grouping here to our right at 20 yards, pretty good. We'll go down and inspect. Pretty much right where they should be. We'll go ahead and head back. Same thing at 25, five shots, nice and easy, no speed. Okay, all inside the A zone, relatively where I was aiming. You can slow down the video and see where the chevron is just before the pistol lifts, and you'll see it's probably just a little bit low. Um, we're talking a quarter of an inch though, but again, for my skill set, this is about as good as it gets unless I'm bench resting it with a normal 9mm pistol in real life anyway. Last one, we'll go ahead and turn around. And we'll hit the 30 yard. Okay, same thing, nice and easy. The chevron pretty much covers the entire A zone at this point, but we're just going to place the chevron's tip again at the white spot and pull the trigger. Pretty good first shot. That one's a Charlie. I felt it pull to the left. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. And that one's pretty good. Now, without even looking at it, I can tell those are going to be high because, again, if we have a 15 yard zero at 30 yards, we're going to be about an inch high. So we'll go ahead and take a walk down. And here we are. We see, yeah, we're roughly an inch high on most of the shots, the one to the left that I was talking about. And uh, that's going to show that we have those kinds of challenges with height over bore, um, the zero distance, all those things got to come into play. But realistically, um, at speed, I'm not going to be shooting that accurate anyway. So, so long as I'm in the A zone when I'm pulling the trigger, especially with this optic, um, it's not really something I'm going to worry too much about. So... Just if you're wondering where the dot should be going or where the impact should be appearing, um, that's why it actually has realistic ballistics. And in this case, we can see at the 30-yard uh, mark with a 15-yard zero, we're about an inch over where we should be, maybe an inch and a quarter. But yeah, hope that helps and explains some of the uh, some of the ballistics here in Ace. We're back here in the hut, and we're going to take a look at our performance dashboard because season three reset everything for us as far as rank goes. As you can see here, I've submitted four out of five of my ranked runs, so I don't have a rank yet for this season. Uh, I had a couple of whoopsies, so my average A score is down a little bit from where I'd like to be. Um, but if we look over to our left, we'll see that the 115 range is going to put me solidly in the gold category. Um, we'll hopefully get our last run a little higher, get back into platinum, and uh, we'll see how that all goes tomorrow when I run my last daily. But if you're wondering which runs now count, it's the daily runs that appear on your drills here, the weekly runs, but only once a week, well, kind of, and then the um, live events as you do those. The thing is with the dailies, those will count three times per day. The weeklies count three times per week. So even if it's popping up more than once per week, which I, as I understand it, it shouldn't be, maybe that's a bug, um, it'll only count three, your first three runs for the weekly series. And then the live events, as I understand it, is the three runs that you'll have um, for that. So for that whole event, um, if it goes to eight, it might be more. But as I understand it, it's three runs out of that. So you can go ahead and click on your performance dashboard here. And it'll show you the runs that count towards your season rank. In this case, on Blake, I didn't do so hot. Whereas my other ones were above my average for that particular stage. We can scroll down. And we can see that on the SHOT Show specials, all of those were above my average for the season. And same thing with leg day here. I had a little whoopsie on the first one. Um, we worked it a little better for those. Mozambique had a little whoopsie on this middle one here. Probably missed the headshot. Um, but you can see all the ones that count. Reactive, though, is the weekly series. And because I shot it before the skill reset, it won't count for my season three ranking. So I'm going to have to wait till next week for the weekly series to count. So just something to keep in mind as you're going through and you're like, which ones count, which ones don't. 
If it's not one of the daily, weekly, or live events that occur here, they're not going to count. And we can see here that we have our daily drill available. So we'll go ahead and click there and we'll see what we're ranked for season three. Fluffy's Revenge, sounds good. Make sure we're in the box. A little tip too with these uh, dailies and weeklies, you can shoot them without pressing the go button if you just want a quick practice run or you know you can get your sights and work on transitions before shooting it. So we press out. Make it sure that we're reading the stage instructions so we don't give ourselves a, a very poor score. But again, it's something where you can actually work the transitions or you can actually shoot a couple shots just to see where you're at. Um, it's kind of like a warm up. You can do it a couple more times. The steel won't get reset, but you can just try until you feel comfortable with running the stage and then go ahead and commit your first run just by pressing the, uh, the A button. So we'll go ahead and do this a few times and see where we're ranked for season three. Stand by. Okay, that's one. Not too bad. We can see here as well, it still gives me a ranking on the leaderboards. Let's see if we can't do it a little bit faster. Stand by. Okay. A little slower. Missed the, uh, the transition onto that first steal. That delta almost really hurt us, so maybe don't speed it up so much and uh, try and get a good solid diamond run for my third run. Stand by. Okay. Nice. So those are our three daily runs. We'll go ahead and take a quick look over here in the hut and we'll see where we're ranked for season three. We can see after running those three drills, all three of them should have improved our overall A score for our season rank. And we actually ranked here at a high gold uh, at 123 season average. We'll go ahead and return to the dashboard and we'll see, yeah, we're two points away from getting to platinum. Um, had a couple of issues with a couple of the dailies, so when you have a poor run, it's going to impact your score pretty heavily. But uh, my average A score here being 123, I'm pretty confident I can get back to diamond here by the end of season three. So hopefully that helps explain some of how season three's scoring works towards your rank. And if you're ever in question, did that count towards my ranked runs? Go ahead and click on the performance dashboard and you'll be able to scroll up and down and see if it counted or not as well as when you shot them. So a lot of people ask, what do we use lead for anymore? Well, it's the official runs leaderboard. So if we look over here to our left, we can see on the leaderboard here, which I think needs to be renamed from rank leaderboard to maybe high score leaderboard or official leaderboard, um, just to kind of remove some confusion for folks. But we can see that some people here have shot some good scores. Um, I made it a pretty good uh, run on this, so I decided to uh, spend some lead and get onto this leaderboard for the season. One of my goals is to be in the top 50 for every stage available in ACE on the official leaderboard uh, because the leaderboard to the left, the practice leaderboard, resets every week. So what I've been doing is going through the stages, spending some lead, and getting a high score on the rank leaderboard or official leaderboard so that way at the end of the season I can see did I meet my goal of being in the top 50 for every one of the stages available in ACE. What that looks like is same as always. We'll go ahead and do a ranked run here. Submitting Stand official by. run appears. The Keep flags the muzzle appear. pointed down. Stand by. Okay, and we'll go ahead and end our run. And because I got a 1290, that doesn't beat my ranked run of a 1459, so it's not going to replace it. But this 1459 will stay there throughout the entire season. So if you're curious as to see if you're improving on the stages over the course of a season, this is a great way to track that. Another thing that I want to kind of advertise to everyone is there's now a range time group available. So if you're curious how you compare against me on my stages that I'm doing for the ranked leader runs, you can go ahead and join the range time group available on acexr.com or on the ACE mobile app. You can even join it here in the app itself, in the headset. 
But if you filter out by that, you'll be able to compare yourself against my scores. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Range Time.